Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'd like to welcome you to the Coronavirus Guidance and Resources for Santa Cruz County webinar. This webinar is being presented today by the Santa Cruz County Office for Economic Development in conjunction with the Small Business Development Center and the County's Workforce Development Board. My name is Andy Constable. I'm the Economic Development Manager for the County. And with me is Brandon Napoli, the Director of the Small Business Development Center, and Andy Stone, the Director of the County's Workforce Development Board. <clears throat> I'll be speaking to you in the order that you see before you on the agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, what we're gonna try to do is cover the most up-to-date information that is available uh, to help lessen the impact to businesses due to the coronavirus pandemic and what available resources exist for businesses such as access to funding and workforce issues related to closures or layoffs. Lastly, after the presentations, we will be answering as many questions as we can. So before we get started, to make this uh, information as widely available and to reach the whole of Santa Cruz County, this webinar is available through a host of broadcast options which includes CTV's YouTube and Facebook channels, the county's Facebook page, and CTV's Comcast channel 25 and Charter channel 71, both of which will be available for replay. So, so in getting here, I guess the question is, um, okay, sorry guys. So how we got here, basically um, the county issued a response to the concerns over the coronavirus by putting a shelter in place issue. Um, and in issuing that we did so on March 16th, which allowed for certain essential businesses to continue operating. As of yesterday, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom ordered a statewide shelter in place order to further limit the spread of the COVID virus. Governor, Governor Newsom's order has no set end date and supersedes the county's end date of April 7th. The governor stated, if I told you it would be over in two weeks, you would think it would be over too soon. However, it won't last months. With that in mind, we will be working to bring you the most current information as possible, including updates on the governor's order and when it will end. In regard to the two orders, we've received numerous inquiries about which definition of essential businesses is to be applied locally. It is our understanding that the, that the county's shelter in place order is consistent with the governor's order regarding the definition of essential businesses. Please know that the businesses identified as essential that can remain open were intended to help reduce potential exposure to the virus and limit its spread. I encourage business owners to carefully read the order to best understand how it applies to your specific business. We know that it is impactful to all businesses, but it needs to be taken seriously to help prevent the further spread of the virus. A little later in my presentation, I will provide you with direction on where to find the county shelter in place order. We recognize this is a lot of very critical information, so if you have more questions about the order and the coronavirus, please contact the county's call center at 831-454-4242 between the hours of 8 p.m., excuse me, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Outside of those hours, you can also contact the United Way of Santa Cruz County by calling 211 or texting COVID-19 211211. So in response to the coronavirus pandemic, the County Board of Supervisors on March 24th will be taking action to put forth an urgency ordinance to limit residential and commercial evictions through May 31st of 2020. In further support of our local businesses, the County's Office of Economic Development has been working to provide up-to-date information and resources to help limit the impact to our businesses. A few examples of what we've completed to date are a guidance for business resources page on our website, which can be found at www.sccvitality.org, 
This page provides links to the most up-to-date federal, state, local, and other resources that are available to help Santa Cruz County businesses. This information is constantly updated due to the fluid nature of the coronavirus pandemic, so please check back often. We're also posting information on, and articles related to business resources on our LinkedIn page and on the county's Facebook page. Obviously, today's webinar is another source, which as I previously indicated, will also be available for viewing uh, and will include information specifically on funding sources and workforce related issues for employers. Lastly, in conjunction with the local cities, the Santa Cruz County Chamber of Commerce and other various business partners and associations will be providing an expanded webinar on Friday, March 27th. We'll be making the announcement regarding the time and what will be discussed uh, probably mid next week. Before we move on to Brandon and Andy's presentation, I wanted to give you some directions here in terms of where you can get some of the information I just mentioned. Uh, this is a screen grab of our um, economic development website, and you see the two red buttons that are there. The one on the left, which is coronavirus specific information, and the one on the right is the guidance to businesses, which has basically uh, a host of links. And what that looks like is right there. And unfortunately, the page is so large now because of the amount of resources that are out there that we, we captured it in two different uh, pictures here. Right here, what I've done also is to outline the uh, Small Business Administration or SBA source for funding. And on this second screen grab of the same page is the shelter in place order, which is highlighted in red there. Lastly, just so that everybody knows it, um, businesses can ask their customers to help them out by the list that's represented there on the side by buying a gift card or shopping over line, shopping online. Um, and there's a host of little things that they can do. So with that, I'll pass it off to Brandon Napoli, who's director of the SBDC. Thank you, Andy. My name is Brandon Napoli. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center. The SBDC has been in Santa Cruz County for about 35 years. We're a nonprofit uh, that is uh, part of a nationwide um, association uh, that is supported by the SBA, the county and, and city of Santa Cruz, the workforce development uh, here uh, in Santa Cruz as well. We have a team of advisors specialized in different aspects of business. We offer free advising to all types of federally legal businesses from anything from how to start a business to grow that business, financial assistance, uh, acquiring lending or um, debt financing, uh, also help with marketing and HR. Uh, again, this is a free service that's offered here in Santa Cruz County. And that first slide and, uh, has our contact information. Five things that I wanna go over and I've brought on uh, a colleague, Scott Rogalski, who's a specialist in providing access to capital for small businesses is uh, the first thing is making your business model agile, then understanding your numbers, extending your cash flow, working with banks, and then applying for the SBA disaster relief loan. So the first thing that businesses can do right now is put their business model on paper and be able to talk through every part of it, write out what it is, what needs to change, or what is likely to change. Be honest with what you know and what you don't know, and please ask for help. The second thing is understanding your numbers. Put them on paper. You should expect that accounts are going to be very busy. Play out different scenarios to know where you could be if different assumptions happen. Again, this is something that we can help you with. The third thing is doing different best practices to extend your current cash flow. Two of the key areas of, to achieve financial stability are planning and communication. It's important to have a solid plan in place for your cash, expense reduction, payment extensions, partial or whole rent abatement, vendor extension for merchandise, employees, et cetera, and to constantly communicate to all stakeholders in your business, employees, banks, vendors, and customers. My experience is that if you communicate, this will help you find a solution and make this period as tolerable as possible. Be proactive in getting through this. Don't sit back and hope to wait for someone to contact you. It's your business and your responsibility make positive things happen. 
So now I want to pass the baton to Scott Rogalski, who's going to talk about working with lenders as well as the SBA disaster relief loan. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Brandon, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, jumping on this call, taking the time out of your day to uh, get through some of these uh, great information. So when you're when you're working with lenders uh, for any existing loans that you have, or um, whether it's a credit card or a line of credit, a term loan, you know, building loan, um, really ask for like uh, deferred payments or ask for um, ask for them to be a little bit more lenient with you. Maybe do some interest only type uh, programs or maybe lower, you know, lower the interest um, and possibly ex extend the payment dates. Um, most most SBA loans are, if you have a current SBA loan right now, most SBA loans are being deferred uh, anywhere from 90 to 100 days, 180 days uh, as far as uh, loan payments. Uh, certain lenders are allowing that. Um, as far as applying for new funding, there's a comprehensive list of uh, SBA lenders uh, that's on our uh, website um, for the Santa Cruz um, SBDC. And uh, we're here, uh, Brandon's team is here. Um, I do some regional work to help Brandon out. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're here just to package loans all day long. And so the the biggest the biggest help for businesses right now is this SBA disaster relief loan fund uh, loan. So th these are this is money directly from SBA that they're lending out to businesses um, and consumers. But um, for this call, it's uh, regarding business loans. So um, these are um, businesses that have an economic injury where uh, they're either closed down, they're ordered to close down, or their income has decreased since since January 31st. The declaration date is January 31st. So anything after that, February, March, and then going forward the next six months, how much income loss are they having uh, from their business being closed or, or shut down um, or minimal people coming in? So uh, some of the eligibility within this, the uh, there's this uh, no credit elsewhere. Uh, so the business needs to show that they're unable to cash flow without a hardship. Um, this kind of excludes retirement accounts, personal residents. So if you um if you can get business elsewhere, like at a bank or something like that, or a micro lender, then go ahead and do that. If you can't qualify for that at this time, then this SBA disaster loan is probably the best for you. Uh so you, you must be a small business under the SBA uh size standards. And we're not going to go over that right now, but uh uh Brandon and his team, uh they have uh that those specific uh, requirements or parameters for you. Uh, so personal guarantees are required for anybody that's 20% or more ownership of the company. Um, and then if, uh, if you have a, if you're part of a, a, a different entity, so if you own multiple companies, you have to apply separate uh, for each entity. Um, and if you're, if you're declined, um, SBA is going to tell you um they're going to tell you why you're declined, and then you could meet with uh, an SBDC director, um, sorry, like uh, Brandon or somebody from his team, and we can help you resubmit so that you have better chance to get approved. So ineligible applicants, so this is changing daily, but some franchises are um, are not applicable, um, and it's, it's, it's always determined on a case-by-case -case for this. Um, those, those, if you defaulted on a like a federal debt, like another SBA loan or like a student loan, then you are not, uh, you won't qualify for this loan. No, at this time, no agricultural businesses, and um, uh, for concerns established post disaster, um, if a if a small concern was established after the impeding imp economic impact uh, becoming apparent, uh, the owner assumed the risk and did not incur economic injury. So for terms, um, as far as applying for this loan, um, this is there's there's some other terms, but this is the, the most um, most important information. So you can apply for anywhere from five thousand dollars to two million dollars. A lot of people have been asking us, how much do I apply for? Well, it's it's a little broken up, but this is what this is what we're telling people. So if whatever it takes monthly to operate your business. Like, um, and if, if you're closed and what it, what it took normally to operate your business before you're closed, uh, per month. So that's like 
any working capital needs. It's it's paying your lights, uh, paying your payroll, your advertising, your rents. It's anything that you pay monthly to operate your business. It's this money can't be used to refinance existing debt, but it can be used to if you have monthly payments of uh, loans and that's like you know five hundred, two thousand dollars a month. It it could be used for that too, just not paying off the existing debt a hundred percent. So if it takes ten thousand dollars to operate your business, just so you can keep the doors open, um, if that's like your you know your break even point, then um, you would take ten thousand dollars times it by six six months. We're asking you to project six months that so you would apply for sixty grand. And um, uh, so most of these loans are thirty years, but um, some some loans are being offered at fifteen years. The rate is three point seven five percent for for profits. If you're a nonprofit. Uh, it's 2.75%. Uh, there's no no fees, including prepayments. You can pay it off any time with no fees. The payments are deferred for 11 months. The first payment is not due until the, the start of the 12th month. So you don't have to start paying on it right away, which is really awesome. Um, credit, it's not defined on what your what the minimum credit score is or, or needs to be. Um, it's case by case, but you're, you should have some worthy credit, uh, meaning... Um, like your, your current, um, or, uh, they're going to kind of look at, look at your, um, sorry, your character of your credit and, and how you operate it, your patterns as far as, uh, use of proceeds. So any, any working capital needs, like I said, collateral, if you're applying for anything under $25,000, there's no collateral. They won't take a lien on any of your assets. If you're applying for over $25,000, they're going to do a, a UCC which is a universal commercial code. It means that they're going to take a blanket lien on all your business assets. Um, like your, you know, your equipment, your desk, your chairs, stuff like that, all that. Uh, disbursement of funds uh, is it's not control. They just give you a lump sum. They just send the money to you. Uh, as far as um, the process, there's this awesome uh, link. Um, it's being updated daily. And uh, it's being there's forgiven more for for uh, more forgiveness on you applying and possibly filling out um, the application wrong. SBA is going to a uh, case manager will call you or email you and tell you, hey, you you filled out this this line wrong or this this page wrong. So they're not immediately declining you if you if you filled out the application wrong. But this is the website. This is where you go. This is where you apply. Um, if you're having um, trouble kind of filling out the forms, you can meet with SBDC and Brandon and his team, and they can help you. Um, the process decision um, is they say they say that from the time that you apply to the time that they tell you if you're approved or not is about two to three weeks, um, and funding uh, could be within that same time. It could be about four weeks before you get the funding. Um, so they, they, they give you a case manager, they call you and they talk to you during that time. If you ask for anything under $25,000, um, they have made a commitment to fund you within five days. Uh, so I had a client that applied on Monday for $17,000 and he got, he got told today that the check is in the mail. So the, uh, they're just, they're just sending out this money, uh, under 25 is the easiest to, to get approved. So the documentation, um, so this, uh, we, uh, Brandon and I just got the most updated information on this today, actually. Um, so if you're a sole proprietor, there's an SBA form 5C. Um, and we have, act we have hard copies of all these, um, these uh, forms that can help you fill them out. We recommend that you meet with, uh, either you, you do this at home by yourself, at your place of business or you meet with a, an advisor, an SBC advisor, and sit down and fill all the forms out manually so that when you go online and apply, it's a lot easier. Um, that's what we're recommending. For If you're not a sole proprietor, then you fill out the SBA Form 5 um, and you select economic injury as your disa disaster. It's not, um, it's not, uh, that's the only box you have to click, nothing else. So um, tax returns, they're only required if you're asking for over $500,000. So that's really awesome. Um, it's, so it's not as much paperwork as it normally takes to get, to get a regular loan. Um, if the most recent federal tax return has not been filed, so if 2019 hasn't been filed, 
then you're going to need to submit a year-end uh, profit and loss statement and balance sheet for 2019. Uh, you're also going to need current year-to-date profit and loss. So that would be from like January 1st to, um, you know, today for 2020 of how your current year-to-date uh, is, is looking. And then the additional filing requirements, uh, there's a form called uh, 1368 uh, where you can provide monthly sales figures. Uh, will generally be required when requesting an, an increase in the amount of economic injury. And then some other documents. So these are the only documents that you that you need to fill out, just like these five that we have here on this list. Um, and uh, the 4506T is, uh, is for the applicant, which is the business. Uh, this is the form that it you need to really know how to fill out because if you fill it out wrong, then uh, they can't collect your taxes. So uh, the 4506T form is a, it's a universal form that uh, if, once you fill it out and sign it, uh, SBA is going to contact the IRS and get a copy of your taxes. That's why they're not asking for taxes, uh, which is also really cool that, that that's, they're set up to do that. So for, for all owners, each principal that owns 20% or more, um, or that is a general partner or managing member, each owner that owns fifty uh, percent or more of another business. So if you if you own one hundred percent of one business, but you have ownership in other businesses, um, then uh, and it's over fifty percent, then you have to um, also do a forty five hundred sixty for that as well. Uh, the personal financial statement is uh, it just talks about you personally as a as a person, not your business. Um, what assets you have, like a home and car, and what liabilities do you have? Um, and then schedule of liabilities is for your, um, is for your business. Great. Uh, thanks Scott. Now we're going to pass it off to Andy Stone, director of workforce development. All right. Thanks Brandon. So today I'm going to talk about some available employment resources for you. Um, to start off, let me just tell you who we are. The, the Workforce Development Board is a public-private partnership here in Santa Cruz County, and we create programs and strategies that provide residents with a pathway to better wages and meaningful work. Um, you may typically know us as a career center where we provide career advice and scholarships, um, but we also provide services to businesses as well. We operate three career centers, the aforementioned career center, centers in the county at these locations here. And today I wanna to dive into some of the coronavirus resources available for business. And there are some links in here. This presentation will be available on the sccvitality.org website and you can follow them there. So I'll just follow what I have here, start with workplace health and safety. So, for information protecting workers from COVID-19, refer to the Cal OSHA guidance on coronavirus, as well as businesses and employers can visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website for help with planning and responding to COVID-19. If you are in a situation where you have to reduce your employees' work hours, I suggest you look at uh, the Unemployment Insurance Work Sharing Program. This program will allow you to seek an alternative to layoff. So you'll be able to keep your employees um, by reducing their hours and some of that wage loss will be made up by unemployment insurance. Um, more details can be found at EDD's website. If you're looking at a potential closure or layoff, so we're talking permanent um, layoffs here as a result of the coronavirus or actually as a result of any um, any business downturn, please contact Belinda Barr, our business services manager at area code 831-763-8872. And she has resources available to um, for you to share with your employees. And if it is at all possible to help avert layoffs, we have resources that we can connect you with as well. Um, as far as tax assistance goes, I think Brandon mentioned this earlier, but employers that are experiencing a hardship can request a 60-day extension to file their state payroll reports. And there is a number listed on the screen here for EDD that I'd recommend you call if you have any questions. 
So for your workers, um, looking at some of the different options um, for, for payments as a result of COVID-19, disability insurance would be one of them. And that is available for anyone that has experienced wage loss due to the virus. And, and you need a medical, um, medical verification of that. Um, paid family leave is available to care for an ill or quarantined family member. Um, and unemployment insurance, insurance in a couple instances, you can use it here. One would be if your child's school is closed and you have to miss work, or if your hours have been reduced, um, you can apply for unemployment insurance to help offset some of that loss. Um, Specifically filing the uninsurance, uh, unemployment insurance claim, I'd recommend that you go to the website first, which is www.edd.ca.gov. Uh, the phones have been overwhelmed this week. So I would recommend you try the online site first. And if you have difficulty there, then try calling the number uh, listed below. Um, they're only available from 8 a.m. to noon at that number. So that's something to keep in mind. And then you also have the option of mail, or mailing or faxing in your unemployment insurance application. And some information is available at the links that we've provided there as well. And if, if you would like to share the YouTube videos at the bottom of the screen, it provides a how-to for applying for unemployment insurance online. And it's available in several different languages. And if you are self-employed or an independent contractor, there are some resources available for you here. One of them is this disability insurance elective coverage. As its name suggests, it is elective coverage and you may have it. So that would be something to look at first. But you also may be eligible for unemployment insurance. Um, possibly you're, you were employed with an employer who made contributions in the past five to 18 months. So it's possible that those contributions could qualify you for unemployment insurance now. And EDD recommends that either way you try applying for unemployment insurance because grants that come out later may request um, to see that you've been denied for unemployment insurance um, before moving forward. So that is what I have to present, and I'll hand it back over to Andy Constable. Thanks, Andy. Really appreciate it. Um, at this point, we've been logging all the questions that have come in as we've been talking, and um, Peter Detlefs is here just going to fire off some questions that he's been able to capture. Just so that everybody knows, we will log everything that has been sent to us here and any follow-up questions, and we will do our best to try to get back to everyone with answers if we don't answer them today. So uh, bear with us, but uh, I'll turn it back to Peter here. All right, so there were quite a few questions about whether or not the presentation would be made available um, and if it would include um, active links. So the answer to that one is easy. Uh, yes, we're going to post um, the both the presentation as uh, probably as a PowerPoint or a PDF on our website, as well as we'll provide a link to the CTV's uh, channel so that you can watch it if you wish to instead of looking at it as a PowerPoint or a PDF. Uh, is there assistance available to it? interpret which businesses are considered essential services? So I again I go back to what I was talking about the shelter in place order that is listed on our website uh, resources page. If you click on that link it opens actually the document itself uh, you'll be able to see the um, essential services that are specified within there. If that isn't something that you feel like there may be some question as to whether or not it qualifies, I recommend using the number that I referenced earlier, which is the uh, county's call center of 831-454-4242. All right. Um, what are personal guarantees? So personal guarantees are for owners of 20% or more uh, will have to personally guarantee the loan. It could be a limited guarantee, uh, which means that uh, it could just result in um, business assets with the UCC uh, and perhaps um, just based on your credit without real estate or other assets involved. Okay. 
Okay, so there were a lot of questions for nonprofits, and so the first one was pretty broad in terms of what defines a nonprofit. Uh, at this point, we haven't had any parameters on anything beyond the 501c. Uh, so there hasn't been anything that says uh, a certain subset of a C is eligible or ineligible. I would, I would recommend all nonprofits at this time apply. Can you apply more than once for an SBA loan? Yes, you, you can absolutely apply for uh, more than once for an SBA loan. What is the best way to contact the SBDC? Uh, the best way to contact the SBDC, on, on the first slide, we had our, our website, uh, email, and phone number. Again, these slides, uh, we'll make sure to make them available. Um, the, the easiest way to contact us is our uh, email address, since we're uh, not allowed to go in the office. That is uh, sbdc at cabrillo.edu. You can also go to our website, Santa Cruz SBDC. Uh, dot org um, to uh, uh, fill out an application, apply now, uh, and that'll put us um, put you into our database and allow us to, to contact you remotely. And uh, this is Andy from the uh, Economic Development Office. Um, if you've got questions that you can't answer that are about what we talked about as far as shelter in place also, I offer you to go to our website and click on the contact us link or if you wish, you can email us directly, which is oed at Santa Cruz County, uh, dot org. Okay. Is there any requirement for how long a business has been um, in business? There's there's no requirement. Uh, SBA has not been forthcoming with their underwriting on business startups. They're looking at this historically. Uh, so the longer you've been in business, the the higher the likelihood that you're going to get the amount that you're looking for. Um, but there's no, there's no, been no requirements of how long you have to be in business to qualify. If a husband and wife who own a business 50-50 of an S Corp, do they both need to fill out the SBA 14, 13 forms? Uh, my understanding is, is yes. Does a nonprofit need to fill out the 4506T form? Uh, Scott, are you on the, uh, here still? So my understanding is, is nonprofits uh, would um, need to fill that out for the business, but not for themselves. Does a 4506T work for an S Corp? Yes. All right. Um, so what's the difference between a layoff or just reduced hours until it passes and we regain business traction? So when I use the term layoff, I'm referring to a permanent separation of employment as opposed to a temporary furlough. Uh, is a sole proprietor eligible for unemployment insurance? So on EDD's uh, Frequently Asked Questions site, um, they they do discuss this exact topic here, which said, and they here's the guidance from EDD. If you are self-employed and unable to work or have had your hours reduced due to COVID-19, you may be eligible for unemployment insurance benefits under a few different scenarios. The first one is you choose to contribute to UI elective coverage and paid the required contributions to be considered potentially eligible for ben benefits. The second is your past employer made contributions on your behalf over the past five to 18 months. And finally, you may have been misclassified as an independent contractor instead of an employee. Has unemployment uh, waived the one week waiting period? Yes, the governor, so there's a, what that's referring to is there is a, typically a one week waiting period of receiving no wages before you can receive unemployment or file for unemployment. Um, the governor has waived that request and you can file for unemployment immediately after um, separating or reducing your hours. Um, are sales tax payments still due next week? Answer. You have to work on that one. All right. Um, let's see. For an economic uh, injury loan, okay. Um, could a business apply for a second disaster loan down the road if they needed it? Right. Uh, my understanding is yes. yes. Go ahead, Scott. The answer is yes. So if they if they apply for an economic disaster loan, they get approved and they they use it uh, before December 15th of this year, 
then they can apply for another one. The applications end December 15th of this year. Okay. And then uh, there's a question about does a nonprofit need to fill out a 4506T? And the answer is yes. And then does an S Corp? And the answer is yes. I see a question there about our website address. Uh, again, it's www.sccvitality.org. So, um, so there's a question on whether or not there'll be a property tax extension. Um, I don't believe the county's made any determination about that at this point. Um, um, Bear with us, we're trying to read through the uh, bulk of questions that's, that are coming in. How long does it take to get a response for an SBA loan? How long does it take to get a response for an SBA loan? Yeah. Um, well, it depends. It depends how much you're asking for. If you're asking for less than $25,000, then it's pretty quick. Like they're saying the same week, but if it's over $25,000, um, it could take two or three weeks. Um, I just got off the phone with SBA and so far there is 700,000 applications in the state of California alone. So I think the turnaround time might, they're, um, they're they're um they're loading up on people right now uh they're gonna start going to a 24-hour call center where you can get a hold of them at any time and um they also uh are stopping production on everything else that they do and only focusing on disaster loans so the what i mean what I, the reason why i'm saying all that is the time frame for them to get in get get a hold of you and talk to you from applying they say it's two or three weeks but I, i'm assuming it's probably going to be about a week or two because they know this is this is high priority uh will there be any relief for staff that does not qualify for ui for various reasons recent hires for instance so the only guidance that we're receiving now is that um ui that actually the employee could be eligible for ui through a previous employer through contributions made um there may be some relief. It, if it's just a layoff, it, there's no additional relief at this time, but there, there could be relief under the disability insurance. Is there any possibility that interest rates for the SBA loans will go down further? There's a, there is a, there's a possibility probably, but probably not anytime soon. Like there, I doubt it. Uh, there are some cities and counties throughout the state asking, like the Congress individuals are like, you know, trying to write bills for that, but I doubt it. Um, I'm not SBA, so I, I probably shouldn't talk on their behalf, but as of right now, the answer is no. If you apply for less than 25000 and need to apply again, how soon can you make the second request? After you spend all the money. Uh, so, like, okay, here's a, here's a quick example. If your operating cash every month is $10,000 and you apply for $30,000, then that would be three months. You wouldn't be able to apply for another three months. You'd have to wait until you're, you use all your operating capital, but it would, it can't be an exorbitant amount. Like you can't ask for 30, spend it in a day and then ask for another 30. So. Um, how long can we expect the first unemployment insurance payment to take? 
So we don't have the exact time frame. That would be something that you would need to contact EDD with. Um, it. I don't even want to give a typical range because we're not in typical time right now. So I would defer that question to EDD. Uh, you mentioned the SPDC offers free advising. Does this include legal advice? No, we we do not uh, offer legal advice. We do have a short list of uh, lawyers that we've um, worked with in the past and heard good things and uh, historically provided free consultation. Um, but we we definitely uh, stay on the other side of not offering legal advice because we don't, we're not qualified to. Uh, when you talked about asking for six months estimated costs for a restaurant, for instance, does this include all products, lease, utilities, and labor costs? Yeah, it includes everything. Everything. Okay. People, payroll, every, everything. I'm a sole proprietor. I have 50 employees. Because I'm not incorporated, can I apply for insurance? Uh, that you're mentioning for self-employed people. So yeah, I would go back to my um, the, my answer that I had about uh, claiming insurance for self-employed. There are the three instances that EDD is providing. Um, you could um, apply for unemployment insurance, and that would be if you contributed to the elective coverage, um, you're, you had a past employer that made contributions, or you were misclassified as an independent contractor. for more general questions. A lot of these were very specific and we'll sort of pass on those at this point. Um, so I think that might be, that might be it. So Andy, do you want to close this out? Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for participating and listening in. It's been, um, it's been, I think, very insightful. And I think the information that we've shared has been kind of broad enough that it covers uh, a large percentage of the businesses that are out there. We wish you all the best of success and uh, everybody stay safe in the process. And thank you again for, for joining us.